Welcome to Timber and Terra. I'm Glenn. The shot that you saw coming in was that road over there. That road right now leads to nowhere, while the back of the field, the beginning of some woods roads over there. But the purpose of that is to lead to a cabin, which will be a, a short-term rental cabin of some sort. Uh, we'll start that project this year as far as the uh, the building goes but before that can happen i need a road so that's what i'm going to resume now that uh, where i left off uh, last fall but before we do too much work uh, i need to do some service to the excavator i did uh, grease it so it's all greased <clears throat> the last video i had uh, which was the scrap metal video, I had mentioned that my hour meter doesn't work. Which it doesn't. So that is a bit of a challenge when it comes to uh, service. But I generally don't put uh, nearly enough hours on this to warrant changing oil every four to say 600, 500 hours. Uh, like the engine oil, because I, it would take me years to generate that amount of uh, hours on this machine. Um, so for now, what I've been doing is really just changing it every year or so. But uh, I've done this before, I'm going to do it again, which is I'm going to do an oil analysis. Well, not me, I'll send it out. But uh, let the oil analysis decide whether I need to change the oil or not. So, this long tube is for sample syringe and my sample bottle which I'll send out okay at least it went all the way down to the ground nature of diesel oil. Turns out I put just enough in there to fill it up. So there we go, one oil sample. So with this done, I just have to send it in, wait for the results. It'll take probably a week, maybe 10 days. I have had the engine oil done before, so at least they'll have something to compare it to, and it was fine the last time I had it uh, analyzed. But for now, with basic servicing done, let's track over to there and I will discuss what we're doing now and what the next steps will be on our road to the cabin. So this is sort of a precursor to, to things bigger and better things to come here in the next uh, coming weeks. So the road itself is just uh, the native clay that was here. I've, you know, pushed it and and um, graded it out and done various things to get the road where I want it and the height and the, the grade that I want. Uh, when I was here last fall, uh, there were some areas that were quite squishy. They pumped. In fact, you can see one right there, which is what I'm going to do next. Uh, just be on this side of those big rocks, there's a, a couple of ruts that uh, they just wouldn't pack in. Um, and then fall came and things just got wet and they never dried out so i was done working for the for the summer so what i've done here then um on the side there was quite a, a steep bank this basically this grade came up right to the road and uh, down so i used that extra um, soil the clay to build up this road and i moved a lot of it down there on the other side of the excavator the topsoil i stripped off here you can see the 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 dozer tracks i was able to to spread it out again it was kind of wet so i need to do some fine tuning and same thing on this side i did uh, spread topsoil up to meet the road 
So the road itself still needs to have some gravel. So that's sort of the next big step is to top it with gravel, probably a four to six inches, something like that. But when I left last year, I had just this tiny little bit. You can see here where the original grade came up to the road. It was much taller down there, but here it's it's only about uh, two, maybe three feet above the level of the road. So that little hunk from there over to there is excess clay that I need to remove. I'm going to use that to build up that section there where the ruts are. Uh, make that so it's basically the, the road bed height and grade that I want. And then once I have that done, you can see here where I spread the, uh, the topsoil back over the clay. And my plan for this road is just to have it mowable right down to the, to the edge of the road. You can see the ditch here. Uh, there's not enough water here that uh, runs on a regular basis where I can't have grass right up to the road. And then, and then when the rain comes, the, the ditch will just be the grass. There are some areas here, uh, more down there, but uh, perhaps here where there is a bit more runoff that collects from the field, as a culvert here, that I might need to line it with rocks. I may not be able to maintain grass. We'll just have to see. So that's the plan now, and it's not going to be a lot of work, um, but I need to get it done now. I want to uh, get this remaining clay on the road to let that set and firm up before I put the, uh, the gravel on top. So I'm not going to get my dozer out for this. It's just not enough to to make it worthwhile to get the dozer out. So I'm just going to um, scoop this up from uh, the grade that it, uh, from where it is onto the road and just use the blade on the excavator and push it down that way. It's only about, say, 30 to 50 feet, something like that. The other thing we'll have to do, you can see all the topsoil along the rest of the road. Some of it I'll use uh, to finish up, uh, sort of make that transition from the field to the road that I talked about just a second ago, but there's going to be a lot of excess. So what I'm going to do is just make a pile at the very end, just before the woods, just to have a pile of topsoil because uh, that's always handy.
Well, that little bit uh, of clay is taken care of. So I still have a fair amount of work to do, uh, sort of boring work I'll do off camera, just collect all these rocks. Uh, these rocks of medium and larger size, I take out one because it makes it a bit more difficult to spread. And the other thing is I use them to line the ditches and for the inlets and outlets of the culvert, like right there. So this does not look great. The excavator does okay spreading, but it's, it's not really good for grade, particularly left to right. I don't have any tilt on the blade, so I sort of have to position the machine to get the, the angle left and right that I want. But anyhow, I just wanted to spread it out. And um, the, next, the next big thing for me personally is uh, getting a box blade, uh, which should be here most any time, and learn how to use it. So my plan here is to sort of do the final grade of that, of this clay road base with the box blade. Uh, that'll be the last thing I do before I bring in the gravel. So a short little video here, sort of a preview of uh, bigger and better things to come. Hope you stay tuned. Thanks for watching this one. I appreciate it. As far as the sample goes and sending it out, I use Blackstone Laboratories. Uh, they seem to do well. I think the cost of a single sample is maybe $35 or $40. So this is um, uh, the ticket you put in there. You just check off what sort of uh, oil it is, where it comes from, uh, hours on the machine or whatever. Uh, the oil sample gets uh, put in the plastic bag. There's some like some pig absorbent that's put in this thing. And then finally, this is the mailer. So you just send that out. Uh, you pay for the analysis separately, and it'll come back in an email with the results. Like I said, in a week to ten days. So we'll share. I'll share the results uh, of the sample when I get it in an upcoming video.